Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code 592, fraction, addition, and subtraction. Before we get into it, just a kind reminder, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps me grow. Given a string expression representing an expression of fraction, addition, and subtraction, return the calculation result in a string format. The final result should be an irreducible fraction. If your final result is an integer, change it to the format of a uh, fraction that has a denominator of one. So in this case, two should be converted to two over one. Let's look at some examples. We'll actually skip these first two because as you can see, it basically they just cancel each other out. So you don't really get anything here. Uh, these two will cancel out. So you'll just be left with one third. And this is one where you actually need to perform some sort of logic. So let's look at this one. So we have basically one third minus one half. Now, as you guys all remember from school, you can't actually subtract these fractions because they have different denominators. So what we need to do is we need to actually put them into a common denominator so that we can subtract them. And the easiest way to do this is just to multiply the other fraction by the denominator of the fraction you want to subtract or add. And that way, both sides will have um, a common denominator. So in this case, we can rewrite one over three as two over six. And we can also, whoops, it should be a subtract. Uh, we can also write one half as three over six, right? And then basically what we get here is minus one over six, and this is our final solution. Now, in this case, this is already the simplest um, we can possibly do because we cannot reduce one any further. But if our final solution, let's say, was you know minus two over six, this is not the um, I guess, least reducible form, because we can still divide by two here, and actually reduce this down to minus one third. So we need to make sure that our final solution is also um, with the lowest um, common denominator, right? Or, I guess, uh, basically, we need to reduce this down to its irreducible form. So it's not always the case that we'll be able to just do the math and return our solution. We actually need to find uh, the greatest common denominator and take that out of the fraction. And that's our final solution. So the algorithm that we want to do here is relatively simple. Um, I've kind of hidden the constraints of the problem here. But basically, you're only going to have, um, you're only going to be given digits, um, slashes, pluses and potentially a minus and the minus is either going to indicate negative or it's going to indicate um, that we want to subtract something. So all we need to do is basically parse out each um, piece of the fraction. So whether it's negative and also the numerator and the denominator, then what we want to do is just simply add or subtract that from the previous value that we have. And what we're going to do there is remember, we can just do that, that simple trick where we had one over two. And if we want to add this, we can just multiply this side by three, um, and then multiply this side by two, and then we can add them with that common denominator. Eventually, we'll get an answer. And we just need to reduce that by whatever the greatest common denominator is. And that's actually our solution. So it's really just parsing the problem, parsing out each individual piece, um, numerator and denominator, doing the addition or subtraction, and then finding the greatest common denominator. And that's your final solution. So let's go to the code editor and type this up. The only really tricky part is actually finding the greatest common denominator at the end. There is actually a simple formula you can use, or there's some built in functions in whatever programming language you use. Um, but we'll just use kind of a simple um, formula that you may or may not remember from math class, but it's fine. Anyway, let's go to the code editor and type this up. Okay, so let's actually code this up. Now we need to basically parse the denominator and the numerator from our functions. And we're going to do that by basically just parsing the string. So let's actually define those variables. So the numerator is going to be zero. And the denominator is going to be one, because obviously, if we try to return numerator divided by denominator, if it's uh, zero, then we're going to have some problems here. So what we need to do is we're just going to go through the string from left to right. So we're going to use a simple pointer to basically keep track of where we are. So we're going to say while i is actually less than the length of our expression here. What we're going to do is we're going to get the current numerator that we're parsing. Remember, in the examples, it was just a single digit, but actually it can be multiple, right? It can be 123. So we need to actually parse everything until we get to uh, a slash and the slash will indicate that we are done with the numerator. And now it's the denominator. So we're going to say that the current numerator is going to equal to uh, zero. And also the current denominator is also going to equal to zero. And we also need to check whether or not our um, fraction is negative, right? Because that's going to influence uh, what we need to do with this fraction. So we're going to say is negative, and we don't know that it's negative yet. So we're just going to set it equal to false. 
first thing we need to do is actually check whether or not our sign, uh, sorry, whether or not the start of this current uh, fraction is actually positive or negative. So we're going to say if the current uh, expression um, of i equals to a um, negative sign, oops, or uh, expression of i um, equals to a positive sign, uh, then we need to handle the sign, right? So if the expression uh, of i equals to, oops, uh, negative, then we need to basically set is negative uh, equal to true. And then what we need to do is just move our uh, pointer up by one. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to parse out the numerator. So we're going to say while i is less is less than the length of expression and the current expression of i is actually a digit, we don't want to overrun our um, numerator here. So we're going to say expression <coughs> of i, god I cannot type on this keyboard, uh, is digit, then we want to just keep parsing. So the current value is going to be int, because obviously it's a string, we need to cast it to an int, expression of i, and then we're going to say that the uh, current numerator uh, equals to the current numerator times 10 uh, plus the current value. And that will kind of update the numerator, right? Because if we have one, two, first we'd parse one, but then if we parse the two, we don't just add one and two, it needs to actually be 10 plus two, and that would give us 12. So that's why we multiply by 10, the previous value each time. Uh, and then obviously we just need to move our index up by one. Now what we need to do is we have parsed our entire numerator, um, but Remember, the numerator can actually be negative. Um, so we can say if is negative, then what we want to do is we want to say that the current numerator, uh, we need to multiply that actually by minus one uh, to make it negative. Okay, so now we need to build the denominator. And remember that we're always going to be given a number like some numerator divided by some denominator. So once we've parsed the numerator, we know that our current character is actually the slash. We don't want to do anything with that. It's kind of just telling us that we've reached the end of our numerator. So we just need to actually skip the divisor by going uh, forward one. Now we can actually parse the numerator. We're going to use the exact same code uh, that we used up here, except obviously we want to update the denominator this time. So we're going to say while i uh, is again less than the length of expression and expression of i dot is digit. Um, we want to say that the value equals int of whatever expression of i is, and we want to say that the current numerator, oh, sorry, the current denominator this time is going to equal to the current denominator times 10 plus whatever the current value is. And again, we want to increment the index by one. Now what we want to do is we want to, now that we have our numerator and our denominator, we need to basically add it to the previous step. And remember that the way that we do that is if we had, you know, one half plus one third, we basically want to multiply the previous uh, function, uh, fraction that we already have by the denominator of the current fun uh, fraction. And the current fraction that we have, we need to multiply it by the denominator of whatever we've accumulated so far. Uh, so we want to just say that the new numerator is going to equal to our numerator times the current denominator. And we need to add to this the current numerator times the denominator. Uh, so whatever the current denominator is, right? And that's going to basically do the addition. And we need to do the same thing for the denominator. Uh, we need to say that the denominator um, is we're just going to multiply them together, um, right? Because if we have one third plus one half, uh, the denominator just becomes whatever the denominator is multiplied by each other are. So the current denominator, whoops, this should be den uh, times current den. Okay, so now we have our actual um, fraction, and we're going to keep accumulating this until the end of this while loop. Now, remember that before we can actually return our solution, we need to basically find what the greatest common denominator is so we can reduce both the numerator and the denominator by this GCD so we can actually return it. So we're going to say GCD is going to be the uh, absolute value of, you know, we're going to call our, we're going to define this function in a second, find GCD of numerator and denominator. 
So once we have this GCD, whoops, uh, oops, this should be equals to app, sorry. Uh, so we're gonna say that that's the GCD. Now we need to reduce both the numerator and the denominator by this GCD. So we're going to set them equal to the um, quotient of dividing by them. And then all we need to do is return the formatted fraction. So we're going to return the numerator uh, divided by the denominator. Now we need to actually find our um, GCD here. Let me make sure my actual, uh, I think I messed up my indexing. Hold up. Sorry, guys. Let's see. Okay, this, aha, this should be indented. And that is fine. This should be there, there, there. Okay, there we go. Fix the indentation error. And now we can actually define our GCD function. So we're going to say def find GCD self. We're going to take in the uh, numerator A and the denominator B. Now, this is a bit of a hack. If you learned this in school, great. If you didn't, then you're going to learn it today. But basically, the greatest common denominator of two numbers, A and B, is going to be the greatest common denominator of B uh, modulo A and A. And obviously, this is a recursive function. And the base case here is that the greatest common denominator of 0 and some number uh, is obviously that number, because obviously you can't divide by 0. So the greatest common divisor here is just B. So basically, we're just going to call this recursive function. Uh, B modulo A and A until basically we get to a point where um, the first argument here is zero and then it just becomes B and then we'll just bubble that up. So yeah, it's a bit of a hack. Like you probably wouldn't know this. Uh, I definitely didn't know this until I solved this problem. Uh, I'm sure there's like a built in in whatever language you're using. Um, but basically it's, it's called the Euclid's algorithm. I'll add a link in the description below if you want to basically find uh, read more about it. But yeah, we're just it's, it's just one of those stupid things that lead code. Uh, forces you to learn. So we're just going to say if uh, a equals zero, obviously in this case we return b as we just talked about. Otherwise, we call our function recursively self.find uh, gcd uh, b modulo a and a. And there you go. So let's just run this. Make sure we didn't make that indentation error. Uh, but apparently we made a spelling error. So let's find that. Okay, at least it tells me where it is. And that should be fine equals oh god damn it yeah you can tell i've been writing too much javascript recently and great that's not good where did i mess up here uh let's do some live coding uh, okay one second i'll find the mistake whoops sorry guys looks like this should have been um indented i think we accidentally unindented it but it should be under the uh, while loop because you need to update the uh, numerator and the denominator each time. So I think now if we run it, it should be all right. Uh, what happened here? Oh, okay, that's weird. Um, all right, and we can submit this and it's going to be accepted. Perfect. So runtime complexity. What is the time complexity? We can see that all we're doing here is parsing through our string expression and going index by index and doing a little bit of parsing. So that all is going to take big O of n time because there's nothing that we do inside of the while loop that is anything but big O of one. And obviously we have n steps, um, so it's just going to be big O of n. Now we also have this GCD that we run, but for this one, because um, we're basically reducing the space by taking the modulo of a each time, this runtime complexity is actually going to be the log of the minimum of a and b. Again, I don't actually know why this is. This is just the algorithm. Um, again, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to read more about it. Um, but that's basically the runtime of the GCD here. Um, but essentially, it's because we're reducing the search space by taking modulo a each time. So it's not uh, a linear uh, function here. So because uh, big O of n is actually larger uh, asymptotically than logarithm of whatever the minimum of a and b is. This part will go away asymptotically, so the time complexity just becomes uh, big O of n. For the space, we don't have anything other than these pointers, but obviously we have a recursive function here. Uh, so for the stack frames of that, the space complexity is going to be the log of min a b, because we need to account for basically the recursion here. So that's how you solve this problem. Relatively straightforward. We've seen this pattern a lot going through a string, basically parsing it. Uh, the only trick here is actually finding this GCD, which 
if you don't know this function, then yeah, you're probably a bit screwed. Uh, there is a built-in in Python, or I guess you've just memorized this um, kind of Euclid's algorithm. It's very strange. I, this was one of the first times I saw it as well. I would have just used the, the fine GCD, but whatever. Anyway, that's enough rambling. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Helps me grow the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.